right, now we've fully learned about the neuron, let's talk about the support structures around the neuron. And so there's also lots of little cells that are called glia cells or neuroglia cells in our nervous system. These are different from neurons because they don't seem to have an action potential or the same type of electrical neurological uh, relay of information, but they're very important to the success of our nervous system. And there's, we're finding out more and more about glial cells all the time. Three that we're going to focus on for this course are the epidemal cells, the oligodendrocyte cells, and the astrocyte cells. So the epidemal cells, these are just the little green ones, and uh, they're not actually green, but for illustrative purposes, and they line the spinal cord as well as the ventricles in the brain. They help with the secretion of cerebral spinal fluid um, and, and help us with the cushioning and protecting of our nervous system. So although they're not relaying neurological information, they're protecting and enhancing our nervous system. Then we have the oligodendrocyte cells, and these tend to be a bit larger. These are responsible for the myelin sheets. They often come out and, and little, little parts of them will wrap around the axons of the neuron cells and they will provide myelin sheath. There are also other glial cells that, that provide myelin, such as Schwann cells. So these support and hold the neurons in place, they insulate the axons, and they help uh, kind of make the structure of our nervous system. And then the third one we're going to talk about are the astrocytes. So these link neurons with the blood system. So the astrocytes are pretty plentiful in our nervous system, and they are really important for providing nutrients and oxygen and glucose to our nervous system uh, and taking away waste materials. And now we're going to be talking about the neurotransmitters in our nervous system. So we learned about the neuron and we learned about the neuroglia, the support systems around the neurons. And now we're going to learn about those little tiny packages that help to cause those ricochet effects. We know that the neurons talk to each other. We know the axon moves in a wave. And we know that the synapse, the communication between two neurons, uh, is this amazing mechanism that allows our nervous system to fire in its electrical impulses. But what are the smallest little bits in there, even smaller than a neuron, that help contain that information? Well, that is our neurotransmitters. These are our synaptic chemicals. And so these are the things constantly being distributed and constantly being involved with reuptake. And different neurotransmitters can do different things to a nerve cell. What we find is they can be excitatory or inhibitory. So an excitatory neurotransmitter is something that it's going to help uh, and make the charge in a neuron more positive. So an excitatory neurotransmitter is going to make more uh, sodium ions come into the axon and it's going to cause that positive charge uh, and the, the repolarization or depolarization to occur. And an, an inhibitory neurotransmitter is actually going to hyperpolarize. That is, it's going to make the voltage in a neuron more negative so that it can't reach an action potential. This is the idea that it's going to change the ions in the axon in such a way that the charge of the, of the, the, charge of the axon is going to become more negative. And because it becomes more negative, uh, it's not going to fire and it's not going to send a signal to the next neuron. So it's actually kind of going to mute it. It's a bit of a mute button, if you will. Uh, you can think about excitatory as power on, inhibitory as power off, if you will. And so we're going to give a couple examples. There are many neurotransmitters in our system, and we're not going to do an exhaustive list of all of them, but we're just going to start off with some of the basic ones that you'll hear a lot about uh, in this course or in uh, second year courses in psychology. So one of the most prominent and prevalent neurotransmitters in our system is glutamate. This is the most abundant excitatory neurotransmitter, and it's really the go button. So this is one that really helps with the structure of the brain and the firing of the brain most. It's the most prevalent that you're going to see, and it does a lot of different things, and it's in a lot of different circuits of our brain. Then we have one of the most prevalent stop buttons or inhibitory neurotransmitters, and that is gamma amino butyric acid. I prefer to call that GABA. And so this is inhibitory, it prevents an action potential. And what we find is when you have enough GABA, you tend to be able to calm down after stress or calm down after anxiety. If we find someone is really, really worked up, it's often that they can't calm down. There's, there's a lack of GABA going on. Uh, and we'll talk more in unit five about different um, external stimuli uh, that can help produce GABA in your system. 
Now, as mentioned, so glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter, GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, but some neurotransmitters can be both excitatory and inhibitory in different scenarios. And serotonin is one of these. So serotonin, as mentioned on the reuptake slide, it is associated with SSRIs or depression, antidepressant medications. And that's because uh, serotonin works a bit like the Goldilocks zone. It helps to keep things in balance. So it's one of those neurotransmitters that helps us to feel uh, happy, but not overly manic or overly um, aroused. So too much serotonin could be bad, not enough serotonin could also be bad. We want to be in the middle. Serotonin, in addition to mood, also helps to regulate arousal. So if you think you don't want to be too wired and you don't want to be too sleepy, arouse, uh, serotonin helps to keep us in that good little zone. It also is a neurotransmitter that aids in digestion. So it does lots of things. Then we have some that are very different from mood. Think about just our motor system. We have acetylcholine, often called ACH. So this is an excitatory neurotransmitter that really involved in the muscle movement and the arousal of our system. If you think about moving your arms, moving your legs, you're going to be used to see acetylcholine. It's going to be the neurotransmitter going between your motor neurons. And so this helps with coordination. If you are low on acetylcholine, you might find you're a bit more jittery or a bit more shaky. Then we have some that I like to call a, a bit of the runner's high package. And so the first of these three is what is called norepinephrine. So norepinephrine, it gives you a large amount of physical arousal. So this is the idea that it makes you feel very alive, very awake. Um, and so you have lots of physical energy. This is what gives you um, the ability to do sports, the ability to run, the ability uh, to jump up and down. And so norepinephrine is that kind of awakeness neurotransmitter. If you don't have enough, you're obviously gonna feel sleepy. And so higher amounts are responsible for what we know as like the fight or flight system. When you jump in, you wanna fight or you wanna run away. Norepinephrine is really that physical arousal. Then we have one that I like to think about as more of a cognitive arousal, less physical arousal, and this is dopamine. Dopamine is uh, the pleasure or feel-good neurotransmitter. In fact, dopamine binds with receptors, and we'll talk a little bit later in our, in our unit, about the pleasure center in the brain. So dopamine feels good. Dopamine is what's released if you win a prize or something new and pleasant happens. Uh, it helps us to feel motivated. We get dopamine uh, released when we eat things like chocolate bars, for instance. Um, now we know that dopamine, much like serotonin, needs to work in a certain level where you don't have too much and you don't have uh, too little. We know that if people have too much dopamine, they may develop symptoms of schizophrenia. And if people have too little, they may develop symptoms of Parkinson's. And so dopamine, uh, when it works uh, in conjunction with norepinephrine, not only is your body awake, but your mind's awake and you feel really good about what you're doing. And then of course we have beta endorphins or endorphins. And what these do, rather than making you feel more awake, these are inhibitory neurotransmitters that suppress pain signals. And so we naturally inhibit pain signals all the time when we release endorphins. So one of the things that happens is when we are very wound up, um, if something really intense is going on, we can release natural endorphins that numbs the pain. And so if you think about somebody who's playing a basketball game or they're running or they're riding their bike and they stumble and they fall and they, you know, skin a knee, let's say, and the knee might be a little bit banged up. They might have a little bit of blood. Um, they might not feel the pain right away. And we often uh, say, oh, that's their adrenaline. But what it actually is here is their endorphins are working with their uh, endocrine system and their endorphins is the neurotransmitter that's suppressing the pain signals. So I like to think about these three as a little package. That is norepinephrine, dopamine, and endorphins. I like to think about it as the runner's high package because if you're a runner and you're going for a run, it's going to produce norepinephrine to keep you more alert, keep give you more energy to keep your run. It's going to reduce endorphins, so you know your knees might ache for the first little bit, but after you're out there for a while, you feel good. And it's going to release dopamine, which makes you feel like you're really having the time of your life and you feel really good. It's going to release euphoria and it's going to feel really nice. Uh, so I always like to say that that's, that's a really good feel-good neurotransmitters when released together uh, that you can naturally release by doing very simple physical activity on your own.